Story one, am I the a-hole for calling my fiance lazy for wanting to be a stay-at-home wife? I'm, 42 male, am engaged to who I feel is the one, 33 female. We had been dating for just over three years and I proposed last month. Last night, after another session of wedding planning, my fiance asked if I would be all right with her being a stay-at-home wife. At first, I laughed because I thought she was joking, but she was being very serious. She told me not to laugh and said she wants to be a stay-at-home wife. I asked her why, as we both make pretty good money in our jobs and we can't afford our current lifestyle with just one income. She says it's because I make a lot more, which is true, I make about 40% more than her, and we could just scale back our lifestyle, and said, it's been on my mind a lot. I think working 9 to 5 just isn't for me. I asked her if she was being serious, and she confirmed that she is. I said that I'm not comfortable with that idea, and said maybe if we have kids she could be a stay-at-home mom, but I'm not cool with her being a stay-at-home wife. And she said that I was being manipulative, since we're both child-free, but I just said that as a hypothetical, since I'm not at all okay with being the sole breadwinner. That divulged into a pretty heated argument with her saying that I should support her dreams. She never stated what she wants to do with her staying at home, even though I did ask. So this is where I may be the a-hole. In the heat of the moment, I said, where is this coming from? Why is it your dream to be a stay-at-home wife? Is it your dream to be lazy? She got really upset at that and had gone to her mother's and said, we'll talk more when you calm down. I'll be real here, I don't want her to be a stay-at-home wife. I'm not okay with being the sole breadwinner, and I do not wish to support this dream. I want a partner in life, not a dependent doing nothing productive with their days. Am I the a-hole? So, I don't think that there is anything inherently wrong with being a stay-at-home spouse. Some oftentimes at homes, like, there's stuff to do around the house that if one of the people stays home, they can take care of, you know, the cleaning and cooking and maintenance and stuff like that, and it's a big load off. It's kind of an exchange of duties. It's basically saying, hey, your day job is going out there and making money. My day job is taking care of the household and errands and all this other kind of stuff so that you never have to worry about that, and together we can be happy. And I think that's perfectly fine and valid. I think being dual income is valid, or, you know, whatever. I think two people who just wanted to work like 20 or 30 hours a week and live off of that. Like, all of those are valid, but it's also a discussion that should be had, and both parties should be happy with that outcome. Like, yeah, if this person wants to be a stay-at-home wife, A, that should maybe be a discussion that came up before wedding planning, but maybe it's also something she just realized. But B, she should also be understanding that this is a, you know, a marriage, it's a partnership, and so it has to be something that both parties are happy with, not just, this is my dream to not work anymore. I mean, I think that's a lot of people's dreams. <laughs> I think a lot of us would be like, I would love it if I don't have to work anymore. Like, what if he countered with, well, it's my, my dream not to work anymore. Why can't you be the one who works? Like, there has to be compromise and understanding. So I don't think you're an a-hole. I think maybe, you know, in the moment of frustration, calling, being like, is it your dream to be lazy? That might have been a step too far, but it also sounds like she was maybe a little unreasonable. So hopefully you can all talk this through and figure out just what it is each of you really wants, and hopefully that works out for you. Story 2. I've fallen in love with the husband of the woman my husband is cheating on me with. I'm 36 female and my husband 38 male. We've been together for 10 years. We have one daughter who 6 female. She's everything. I found out a year ago that my husband is sleeping with his employee 30 female. How? Her husband, let's call him Jay, 35 male, contacted me. He was heartbroken and he thought that I ought to know. He provided me with text messages and dated when they've been in hotels. I recognized my husband's style and I recognized the other woman. I have seen her on multiple occasions when I visited my husband at work. She'd been nothing but kind and pleasant towards me and she always doted on my daughter. I asked Jay what he wanted to do and he said that he wasn't sure yet, so I requested that we should meet. He agreed. I told him about my life and that I'm currently not working. After the pandemic, I lost my job, and now the economy, I haven't really had any opportunity to find a job. Instead, I've been studying these past two years. If I divorce now, I won't be able to provide for my daughter. That would probably put her in my husband's custody as a primary provider. 
I asked him if he could wait for a few months, hopefully longer, therefore, and to my surprise, he agreed. I thanked him profusely, but he told me that he didn't know what to do either, so he's happy to wait. Also, the other woman has three children from a previous relationship, and he was worried that she would refuse him being in their lives once he confronted her because he's not the father. We kept in touch, however. He called me a few times a week, and soon we started to talk about other things than our failed marriages. Afterwards, we started going for walks, coffees, movies, etc. I found myself thinking about him often with a smile on my face. He was the first thing I thought of in the morning and the last thing I thought of before going to bed. For the last three to four months, we probably mentioned our spouses once or twice. We talk about everything else and he always makes me laugh. He thinks I'm funny too. Two weeks ago, we were having a picnic and he just blurted out, I think that I'm in love with you. When he explained himself, it just drove the point home that I am in love with him. He said that at first he wasn't sure why he was feeling like this toward me and explained it away as two jilted people finding comfort in each other, but that he realized that he wasn't heartbroken anymore, that he even thinks of his wife's infidelity as a blessing because it leads him to me. That was exactly how I felt too. I didn't know what to say. I told him that I'm terrified that these are false feelings that would go away once we freed ourselves from those who hurt us. He just beamed at me and said he was willing to take the risk just to find out. He kissed my hand because I thought we were still married, and if we did something then, how were we better than our significant others? I don't know what to do now. I find myself daydreaming about him, about introducing him to my daughter, kiss him, wake up next to him every morning. I still have one semester left, and then I'm probably going to find a job. I've already had some offers for when I'm finished with my studies. I've thanked Jay so many times for being so patient with me about everything. I appreciate that he's waiting for me to put my life in order before we expose our spouses who aren't really seeing each other as often as they used to. He told me he's happy to help, and he just wants a real kiss as a thank you when everything is over. My goal now is to secure my job and leave this marriage. Am I pathetic for wanting to give Jay and I a shot and see where it would go? Can two broken hearts really find happiness together when their love stories start like ours? Love stories can start in just about any way possible, I imagine. Okay, maybe not any way possible, but yeah, I think that those could be valid feelings, and maybe they aren't, but you know what? That's the risk with every relationship. Like, anytime you're dating someone and you think you might have feelings, maybe not, maybe it's infatuation, maybe it's excitement, who knows? There are always reasons and to, you know, question it, and it's always a risk. And I think that's fine. And I I would say don't hold off on stuff too long. I don't know. It's just to have to put on a charade with each of your significant others and stuff seems like a lot to carry and it might make things messier. And I know you're worried about custody and whatnot, but I don't know. With child support and stuff, maybe it wouldn't be that big a deal. I don't know enough about divorce and child custody stuff. But yeah, I say give it a shot. It it seems like you've made a connection. And clearly, neither of you is in a great relationship currently with your significant others. And I don't know, maybe it's not working out for your significant others and they'll be unhappy about it because they've seen each other less. But I don't know, maybe they just felt guilty and maybe you can all have a laugh about it and <laughs> go out to dinner together after this. I don't know, maybe it is a blessing in disguise. I hope it is. Story 3. Today I effed up by telling my friend I have feelings for her. My friend, 28 female, and I, 29 male, met about 10 years ago from a mutual friend's party. At the time, she had a boyfriend and I was just starting a relationship. Somehow that night we met, we clicked right away, and we formed a very good friendship. We would communicate often and would get together with our partners. I can say we've gotten pretty close through the years. During these 10 years we've been friends, we both have been through a few relationships and we've always been there to console one another when things didn't work out for each other. I split from my last girlfriend about a year ago and my friend also just had a breakup possibly a couple weeks before that. This past year we've spent so much more time together than we've ever had before. Working out together, breakfast, lunches, dinner, going out for drinks or movies, weekend getaways, etc. I never considered myself making a move since I truly enjoy the friendship we have, nor has she ever given me any signs of wanting to make a move. In the past, she made a comment when I was going through one of my breakups about how I deserve someone better than the girl I was dating at the time, and also said that she wouldn't date me because she wasn't good enough for me either. A few months ago, we were discussing future plans and what we are looking for in a partner, and we both basically said the same thing we're looking for, and she jokingly said, we're probably soulmates and we don't know it. 
In the past two months, the idea of us being more than friends has crossed my mind so often that I've been contemplating telling her about it. Last month, she invited me as her plus one at one of her work events in New York, which took place two weeks ago. I decided to tell her what I was feeling when we were on our walk back to the hotel after an event. She told me that although we have such a great friendship and she believes we would give it our best to make it the best relationship, she only sees me as a friend and she doesn't want anything more than that. I told her I respected her decision and hoped that this wouldn't change things between us. I made sure not to act weird or different the rest of the trip and kept things as they were even though I was disappointed and ashamed inside. We returned back to our city earlier in the week and honestly we have not communicated much at all. I'm starting to think making my confession was a mistake. And I wish I could take that moment back. I fear that I may have possibly pushed a great friend away. Look, that's always going to be the risk if you have developed feelings for a good friend. And I've heard some people say that you shouldn't try to date friends because it can ruin the friendship. And I think that's, that's wrong. No, I've known plenty of people who were friends for years before they dated. And now they're the most amazing couples you've ever seen. Different things for different people, okay? Everyone's different. And for some folks... That friendship foundation is perfect for a relationship, so people who say that, calm down, okay? As far as you regretting that, don't. You know what? If you hadn't told her, you would regret not telling her, and then you would see her get into a relationship, and you'd regret that you didn't tell her. Asking yourself, what if I had told her? Oh, if I told her, maybe she'd be with me, but now she's with this other person. And now you're fixating on her in this new relationship, and you're not pursuing new relationships. And it's eating away at you, and eventually you blurt it out to her when she's, like, engaged to this person, and now it's super awkward and bad. You don't know until you ask. And yeah, there is the risk that, you know, it'll make things awkward for a bit. But if you're such good friends after 10 years, you can repair this. You can just keep things going and, you know, and maybe she'll eventually discover feelings. Maybe not. And maybe you'll realize it was infatuation. Maybe not. I don't know. But you can't dwell on the past and dwell on like, oh, I did this thing and it's kind of embarrassing. It would have been just as bad, if not worse, if you didn't tell her. And at least now... You know that you tried, and I think that's the better of the two options. Story 4. Entitled parent tries to hit my pregnant mom, loses custody of his only child. Some context. I was 11 when this happened, and my mom was about 8-ish months pregnant with my little brother. Her live-in boyfriend was a massive waste of DNA, and he usually took his frustration out on me, but he thought I was at Mima's, my grandmother's, because of my mom's dietary changes while being pregnant were causing me health problems. I was over helping her with housework and had been playing games for about an hour at the time of the incident. So, A-Hole had gotten home at about 8 or 9 p.m., and he was already in a bad mood for some reason. My mom was going to see what was going on and asked him to stop shouting because last time the neighbors came over due to the noise volume and she didn't want to have to explain that one again, honestly. I didn't blame her. She's pregnant, her feet hurt, and she was in the hospital for kidney stones like three days before this happened, so she's tired and frustrated. Apparently A-Hole decided he felt the need to be mad at her and started shouting obscenities at my mother, which led to me grabbing the baseball bat I kept under my bed and sneaking closer to here. Well... Right as I got within range, I saw his hand fly up, and I had seen that gesture before. He was aiming to hit my pregnant mother, so my first reaction was to swing that bat into his leg as hard as I could, and when he went down, I hit him maybe three or four more times at full force, mind you. And even though I was a child, I was certainly not weak, and knew to aim for his knees and wrist, apparently. I nailed his left wrist at one point. My mother called Mima and 911, which resulted in a cop car and an ambulance. The cops asked what happened as they loaded the man into the ambulance and he tried to say I assaulted him unprompted. This was when Mima came to the rescue and interjected that one. I have never hit someone without being hit first and two, A-Hole and my mom were constantly fighting. She then said they could ask the neighbors who verified the statement. When the cops asked why I hit him so hard, it broke at least one knee for sure, I stated he could hit me and I'd probably hide since he's bigger than me, but he was going to hit my mom and she has a baby nearby. I didn't want the baby to get hurt, so I hurt him first and made sure he wouldn't do it again. My mom agreed to press charges for assault, child endangerment, and child abuse. The cops were also informed of how he verbally, mentally, and emotionally abused me and Mima had at least one voice recording of this happening in the past. 
Now, I didn't go to the court case because I was a child and everyone agreed to not bring in the children if it was avoidable, which it was since Mima had physical proof of his abuse, but later I found out he was only allowed weekend visitation at my mom's convenience and had to pay child support. A few years afterwards, he got himself arrested for some reason and had his visitation rights revoked by the court, so yeah, don't attack my mom and don't F with my little brother. My family will ruin you. Nothing was more gratifying than knowing that this man can no longer see his only child because he thought he could get away with being an abusive D. Ah, <sighs> you know, this guy deserved it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm normally, I know everyone, people give me guff in the comments where I do a lot of, look, I don't condone violence, but sometimes, look, self-defense and stuff like that, do what you can, protect yourself, okay? That is my stance. I, I don't like violence for the most part, but if you need to protect yourself, or in this case, your pregnant mother, then yeah, I'm okay with it, all right? I know, stop, I get it. But yeah, no, this kid, like, that's terrifying for this kid to have to do that, and it's probably sticking with them in ways that are going to be kind of traumatic, and I feel terrible for them having to do this, but who knows what that man could have done, and I'm glad that he does not get to be around his child, because clearly he's an abusive person, and that child is going to be better off without him around. So, good on you, little Avenger kid. You're apparently the hero that we need, or want, or whatever. Story 5. My father continuously makes fun of my body and won't listen when I ask him to stop. To start things off with a few side notes, I'm very insecure about my body and have been since a child. I'm especially insecure about my stomach and thighs. I train, I do eat right, but it's just an issue that will forever haunt me. I've come to terms with it over the years, but at the moment, I'm not sure what to think. I'm 5'3 and weigh about 50 to 55 kilograms. My stomach is a bit plump and my thighs are pretty large. My body is covered in stretch marks from God knows where. I've been teased about this in school to the point of dropping out due to mental health and trauma. The rumors got out of hand. It started with my body, then it went to me apparently sleeping with everyone in school. They bragged about the thickness of my thighs, how fun it apparently was to grab the skin on my hips, how the marks made them feel superior because they looked like scars. Keep in mind, I've never shown my body during my time in school. I've never slept or merely engaged in conversation with anyone unless I was forced to. I never mentioned it. Never did sports. The only person who knew was a so-called best friend who ended up getting jealous that I managed to pull a date. That was the only reason. It hurt a lot, but by the time she confessed, I was already down low, to the point of nearly ending it all. My teachers even laughed in my face when I went to them for help because my parents brushed me off. The only thing that was holding me together with sparkly glitter glue was that godsend of a date who I am still with today. He always assures me that my body is perfect for him, but I could never truly believe it. I can never shake away those memories, and I can't shake away the comments from my own father, the person who I looked up to and respect. My father's always been a joking person, always finds a way to lighten up a room, but now I don't think I can ever see him the same again. He knows how I feel about my body. He's always supported me and encouraged me to train if I really wanted to, but now I feel like it was just an act. I don't know what to think or feel. I don't know if I'm overreacting or not. About a year ago, the comments started. They were innocent at first, so I brushed it off as his jokes. Then came the hip pinching, the stretch mark dad jokes, the remarks about wearing tight pants to hide my oversized legs. It really hurt. I couldn't deal with it at the time, so my aunt, who I consider as a mother, took matters into her own hands. It stopped for a while, until a few months ago. I was slowly getting comfortable with my body again and decided to wear shorts for the first time in a long time when we went to visit my parents. I had my back turned while talking to my mother. My stomach dropped when I felt the pinch on my thighs. I knew what was coming. He said, what's with this? I thought you diet. And he jiggled the skin of my thigh, emphasizing what he was referring to. I couldn't stop the sob and I just left. My partner didn't know what was happening when I pulled him into the car and asked him to drive home. I was a mess. That night he just held me and I was grateful for his presence. All the memories started coming back by that singular joke. He still found ways to comment on my body, but I forced myself to ignore it and act unbothered. That brings us to three days ago. It was nearing my birthday, so my mother and I were discussing an outfit to get me. She wanted to personally look for something, so she needed my measurements, which I gave her. She was using my dad's phone, as she had a bad streak of luck with breaking hers. My dad then started. He asked me what my, why my waist was so wide, why were my hips so high, why wasn't it proportioned right? If I was sure, I measured in centimeters instead of millimeters. I went along with it because I wanted to at least try to be a better person, but I failed. 
I broke when he told me I'll never be able to fit into any of the outfits my mother showed me. It's pointless and I should just cut holes in a bag and wear that to my birthday party instead because it's the only thing that I will fit in. He didn't stop there. He said it needed to be long enough to make me look at least normal. I dropped my phone at that point, sobbing. I couldn't stop and again, my partner just held me, whispering reassuring words throughout my breakdown. I ended up trying to talk to him, trying to get him to stop, but he just brushed me off like my school days. He told me that he was only joking and I need to stop being so serious that I can't help my body turning out the way it did. The worst part about it was they visited me today and I had to act fine because we had other guests over. It didn't take long for the jokes and pinching to start in front of everyone. He pinched my thighs when I walked past. He pinched my stomach, my hips. He said that I'm getting bigger because of my stretch marks that he apparently never knew were there. He asked if I was mad at him, but all I could do was plaster on a smile because I couldn't say anything. I was on the brink of bursting into tears. When they were leaving, he tried to joke around and pinch me again. I managed to choke out, please stop, and he told me to stop being so dramatic and accept that it's a joke. My partner's not happy about it, but I asked him not to intervene. I'm appreciative that he's here for me, but I cannot handle a fight right now. He's been trying to cheer me up, showing me cute outfits, saying how nice I'll look in them and all the other stuff, but I can't bring myself to let it go. I know it's not his fault and I'm wrong for not wanting him to step in, but right now I just need a hug. Am I overreacting? No, you are not overreacting. What your father is doing is not joking. What your father is doing is mental abuse. And I think he's a piece of crap. I cannot stand people like this. Because A, oh, he wants to say he's joking. He's just making the same jokes over and over again. So first off, he's not funny. He's just tired, tired in the just playing out the same cruel crap over and over again, knowing that it hurts you. Like, oh, it's a joke, you shouldn't be offended. You don't get to decide what offends this person or what hurts them and what this person has gone through. And just be like, oh, you should care that you're making them cry and that it hurts them. And whether or not you think it's a joke, you stop it. Otherwise, that just makes you a monster, an absolute abusive piece of crap. And frankly, I think that your daughter should cut off all contact with you and get you out of her life. That's what I honestly think, because if you can't actually respect her emotions and how that makes her feel and what you're doing to her, you're, what you're doing is worse than the bullies in school because you're someone that she trusts and looks up to and loves and you're destroying her. And the fact that you're doing that just makes you an abuser and a monster. And I would never in a million years fault this girl if she wanted you out of her life forever and was never willing to accept an apology at this point because she has tried with you, father, and you don't seem to care. So eat crap, you absolute a-hole. And for the person who wrote this post, your body is wonderful. Don't listen to this person. Listen to the people that you love, because if you love them, then their opinions should matter to you. And your partner, your boyfriend's opinion is right. You are a beautiful, wonderful person. Stretch marks don't matter. I got them. I got some stretch marks here. I'll even show them on camera and stuff. You can kind of see a couple of them here. There you go. I'm on the internet. I'm there. I'm happy with myself. And you deserve to be happy to punch your dad in the teeth. Don't actually, but I'm just... Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.